Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jay Sean at How To Reviews, and today I wanted to talk about a new monitor, the A6 Plus made by Andy Cine. So here we have the Andy Cine A6 Plus. It's a 5.5 inch 3D LUT touch monitor. This is the original one that I've been using for a while. It's really good and reliable. So let me just show you what that looks like here. In this case I had to purchase separately, but it still works really well. And this is the one that a lot of people have been using if you're not using a small HD monitor. A lot of it has to do with this bracket that spins around. It's what I'm using currently right now on the other camera that's filming me. And um, it works really well. So let's compare this and see how this stacks up against this new one right here, which is a touch monitor. Very familiar, pretty much how all of them have come. And if you didn't like this bracket because it was uh, maybe getting too loose for you, they, all, they also offer this. Uh, it's like a cinema toolkit, which I use all the time. It comes in handy. It has a lot of Allen keys and stuff like that that you may or may not need. And most importantly, it comes with this, which is pretty much like a swivel, which works really well also. So. This is the small case that the new one comes with. And this is the case that I had to purchase separately for the other one, which is quite a bit bigger. And let me just show you, huge difference. And this one's actually labeled as well. So pretty good. As far as the size of the actual monitor, sorry, it's hot. I got the sun beaming right on me. This comes nicely packed. Here's the monitor and the lens hood, which appears to be similar in design. This is a zip case. And let me show you what's in the zip case first before I show you that. There's a micro USB. Here's a HDMI with a, I believe that's a micro HDMI. Pretty much the same as before. It actually comes with the battery, which is nice. Comes with a smaller Sony battery, the FP. Let me see if it has any battery life in it. Usually they don't. It come with battery, but here you go. It's a small one. This is nice. So that US, micro USB was for this. It's a charger, which is nice that it came with that. And it also comes with the L bracket. So you can pick and choose whether you want to use the L bracket. I'm sorry if I keep looking up here, but I, I really can't see what I'm doing. I'm curious to see if they updated this in any way or if it's, if it's exactly the same. So, I guess let's just see. Let me show you the monitor. If I can get it out. Monitor looks pretty nice. A lot of space here, flat space. You can see that the monitor is actually only within this certain particular area, but compared to this one, I don't know if they're exactly the same measurement or not, but this one, may seem a little wider and this one may be a little bit thicker but if I hold them exactly side by side the casing is just slightly different but the screen real estate may be very similar I know big monitors are great to use but to me honestly uh, on most running gun situations I prefer a smaller monitor something that I could pack away easily if you're in a, a studio setting or something like that I think that a larger monitor obviously is a way to go but let me see let me try this bracket on. I think it's the same style bracket to be honest. Just screw it in on the side. Matter of fact, let me just look at the bracket to see if it looks any different. Mm. They appear to they appear to be the same. They almost appear to even be the same size. They still get kind of loose like the other one did but you just tighten it. It's never been a big deal, a deal breaker to me. Every time you move it, just retighten it. it. Has a hot shoe or cold shoe mount right here. And if you don't like this, like I said, you could always uh, screw this directly on the bottom, which I don't know how I feel about that usually because these are plastic. So I don't like putting a lot of weight or tension on here. And plus this actually feels like it won't fit, like it's too loose, I'm not sure, let me see. No, it still actually fits, but what I end up doing is putting it on the bottom of this bracket, there's actually a cold shoe. I put it on here, that way it takes some of the tension away if you need to constantly push and pull and you can easily just spin this around instead of flipping or having to mirror the screen differently in order to see what you need to see if you're looking at yourself. Looks pretty good. 
looks pretty good as far as the looks are concerned. One great thing about this one compared to the other version right here is that this Andy Cine monitor doesn't have HDMI out, it only has in. So this one is great because it has in and out so you can actually send the signal somewhere else or receive it. Oh, let's see, one of the things with the other Andy Cine was that um, it was kind of hurt your hands to release the battery. Oh, you know what I just noticed? This actually takes two different types of batteries. There's a, a slit here that makes it look like, I could be mistaken, let me just see. Here's a Canon battery. It can take a Canon battery, push the button, release it without pinching your fingers off. And here's a Sony battery. Just put it the opposite direction. Let me see if I can figure this out. Oops, I have it backwards. Hmm, that's pretty. That's a pretty cool design. So most people do have Canon or these thicker Sony batteries. For me personally, when I use monitors, it's something I need a lot of battery life for. I tend to use these and I get the bigger ones, but it's really nice that you have both options on the same tray. And to release it, just push this button and it comes out really easy. This one, there is, you just have to push this tab and slide it out. And I found that I always used to jam my fingers so as it's locked in, you have to put your finger in here. While your finger's in here, you have to force it out and I would tend to pinch my finger in here like this, which would not be pleasant. Uh, once you get used to it, obviously you're gonna make sure that you don't hit yourself, but it was kind of annoying to be honest. But I like this design, this is pretty nice. And I see they have their own branded batteries here, if you can see that. So let me put this back in. This one has a roll menu. And it also presses in power. Let's see how this works. Let me hold this in for a few seconds. There you go. Hopefully you can see it power on. Okay, and you can actually turn the touch on or off. And this is without me looking at menus or looking at um, manuals. This is literally me just turning it on and going for it. So if you hit this on or off, there's an option on the screen which you probably can't see. This is touch off or on. So I'm gonna do touch on because I wanna see how responsive this is. It seems very quick. To be honest, even when I move the wheel quickly, it feels like it's responsive. It's not skipping steps or anything like that, which is nice. And then you to select something, you just press it and then you roll again until you meet your option. That alone is actually better than the click buttons to me. It's, it's a lot quicker. The touch is just a lot faster. It's super blazing hot, so let's get back into the office and let me show you some more detailed shots so you can actually see what I'm trying to show you out here in the bright sun. And um, yeah, I'm burning up. So quick disclosure, this item was sent to me for review. If you're interested in any of these items, the link will be in the description below. It'll be their Amazon store and the Amazon links to these items. So check this out. All right, so I know this is a little weird with me holding it while filming it, but I wanna show you some really cool features. Let me try to get this centered. It's kind of hard for me. Anyway, so it's very quick to use. If you want the menu, the touch menu, just grab from the bottom and go up. Touch anywhere and it'll make it go away. If you wanna turn off the volume, just imagine the screen being divided in the middle and on the right side is volume, just touch. Let me just move my hand out of the way. There you go. You see? Same thing on this side, you just grab it up and the backlight will go up and down. I like to leave it around 80. Seems to be pretty good, I'll make adjustments as needed. Um, if you double tap, it brings up the actual menu. And here you can touch things, uh, focus it, you know, you can turn it off and on, whatever, all the details. Flip. And you have to actually touch it first before you um, make it. So if you select it, then you change it. Flip off, flip on. Touch anywhere to make it go away. So it's super quick. Um, you really don't need to really touch the wheel too much. At first I thought you had to touch it in order to get to things when I was filming outside, but really you don't. Just quick shortcut, touch anywhere to get rid of it. There you go, tap. Tap one time to get it off. Same, and you can't have two menus open at the same time. So if you have this up and you wanna do this, it's not gonna work. Touch it one time to make it go away. If you want this on, you want something else, you can't double tap, it'll just make it go away. So just hit it one time. 
and it'll go away. So hopefully this wasn't hard to see the way I'm doing it too much. I know this is really confusing in how this is looking right now. Looks like uh, one of them, what is it called? Like something in the circus or something where they have the mirrors in the mirrors. Looks like some weird whatever going on here. One thing I do want to see is if I can zoom in. Uh, see, when I tap it like that, it don't work, so it's just me. Uh, let me go through the menus. We have histogram, focus assist, audio meter, zebras, monochrome, false color. Uh, we have safety marker, center marker, marker mat. Um, we have under scan, aspect ratio, auto, anamorphic mode, flip, which is basically like mirror modes, zoom, times, off, freeze, pixel to pixel. Let's see zoom time. What does that mean? Okay. Oh, so you can zoom in. Nice. Can you move the zoom? You can't move the zoom, but it does zoom in. I don't know. Let's see how high this can go. It's saying it can go. I'm trying to see how far it goes. This takes a while to zoom in if you're holding it, but it's going right now. Uh, it's at 300%. Now, is there a fast way to reset that? Not that I can tell. So you have a pixel to pixel option. I don't know when you'd actually, or when I would actually personally need that, but if you hit it, it does punch in the image. You have your RGB. Color temperature, you have a LUT switch off or on. LUT import with the SD card, color temperature, backlight. As is, it looks, it looks pretty accurate and sharp. You don't really have to touch any of this that I can tell. Um, the actual different settings. So your wheel, right now, if you roll the wheel, it just turns the backlight adjustment, but I don't really see why you would need that if you can just use your finger. It's pretty easy and quick. Transparency. OSD time, volume, reset, firmware update off and on. As far as I can tell so far, I don't think there's a way to customize these, but I'll look further into it. And if I do find out, I'll correct myself in the video because I would I use mirror flip a lot and I would like to actually have that here as one of the options. On the old monitor, there is a USB port that apparently is supposed to be, I don't know why it's not focusing, but it's supposed to be for upgrading firmware. This one doesn't have that port. It basically has an SD card slot that you put for your loading your 3D LUTs. I don't know why it's not focusing. But in the manual, it actually says that it's for updating firmware. And there's something in the menu that says update firmware. So I don't know if that's actually giving us access now to update because that would be a great feature because a lot of people ask for it on this version and they wouldn't allow it. It's only from the manufacturer, which kind of makes no sense to me. If they were to allow you to update these monitors, there would be more of a long-term investment in my opinion. That would be a great feature. I don't know as of yet if that's even possible. And maybe I'll reach out to the, the, to the seller and find out for sure. But either way, my summary for this particular monitor is, this is now gonna be my A monitor. And then I have the other versions as my B and C monitors. I really like the monitor. It's super quick. Um, I'm extremely happy with it. I'm not gonna actually use the upload to 3D LUTs because, well, actually, you know what? I probably will use it on the Sony, but on my pocket camera, I don't really need that function because it's built into the uh, actual camera itself. But I actually may take that and use it for the Sony. Uh, a lot of times on the Sony, to be honest, I'm not using a lot of creative LUTs. I'm just kind of shooting it uh, quote unquote normal. I'm not really using it for any uh, creative type of stuff at this point. These are more like workhorse cameras for me. So I kind of don't even need it for that. It's pretty simple, but I can make a separate vi video detailing that information. I'm just letting you know that it has the capabilities of up uploading 3D LUTs and using them to for viewing purposes. It's very quick, the color is great. It, it works good. I love the option that you can have two different style batteries. I love the price point. So I think it goes hand in hand with the other monitors. If you can update the firmware when they have new features released, that will be a super plus. If not, even with my other ones, I can't update the firmware. If they come out with a new version, you're kind of stuck with what, the one you have. But at the price point of a few hundred dollars, give or take, you really can't beat it, honestly. You can't beat it compared to what's going on and what's already out there.